Hello, welcome to Rappler Talk. I'm Marites Vitug and joining us is Julio Tihanki, professor of De La Salle University. He's a political scientist and he was former member of the Constitutional Commission, which drafted the recent uh, proposed constitution. Thank you, Professor Tihanki, for joining us. Thank you. And Thank you, you have been a political analyst for a hundred years or so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, naman 100 years. <laughs> so election season is upon us mm -hmm. and we call on you again to yes. help us make sense of what's happening. Yes. So we're having midterm elections in May. Yes. Ito ba, Professor, a, are midterm elections ba a referendum on the current administration? Is that a, a fact or a trend? Yes. Usually when we, when we think of a midterm election, no, especially under presidential forms of government, no, uh, presidential type. It is taken as a form of referendum. No? Uh, this is unlike the uh, parliamentary form of government in which at any time there can be a government, an administration can be voted out uh, because of a vote of no confidence. Yes. No? But uh, under a presidential form of government, kasi, uh, we have fixed terms. No? So mm -hmm. it's only during the midterm mm -hmm. election that the electorate, the people, can actually uh, register mm -hmm. their, their, uh, their support or uh, opposition to an incumbent administration mm -hmm. by voting for or against the administration slate. May nangyari na ba in the past that during a midterm, uh, election. It was the opposition which won. Yes, uh, actually, no. Uh, in the uh, pre-martial law era, no, we have all, we have we have had a total of seven midterm elections, no. And um, dun sa seven na yon, no, there was uh, usually it's the incumbent, the administration, yes. who has the advantage, okay. no. So usually, rule of thumb in midterm elections, it is always the incumbent. Uh, the mm -hmm. administration's late that uh, has the advantage. No? Except in the pre-martial law period uh, during the 1951 election, mm -hmm. no? uh, which uh, uh, happened under the administration of Elpidio Quirino. Mm -hmm. uh, previous to that, in 1949, he won his own term after succeeding uh, Manuel Rojas. But that election in 1949 was... Uh, mired in election fraud. No? So there was a uh, question on uh, stolen election. And ang namuno dun sa opposition during the midterm election dun sa opposition, which is the Nationalist Party, was none other than the defeated presidential candidate uh, ng Nationalist Party noong 1949. And he topped the election. And that was Jose P. Laurel. So, so very rare pala yung very rare okay. in the post edsa period mm -hmm. no uh, it only happened i think uh, uh, once no uh, well nung nung pre martial law period twice pa lang nangyari mm -hmm. no 1951 and 1971 under this time around ah. under the uh, uh, the second term of Ferdinand Marcos, Marcos. and 1971 of course we all know uh, ang nangyari doon ay yung August 21, 1971, the infamous Plaza Miranda bombing, which, uh -oh. which uh, catapulted the entire opposition LP slate uh, to victory in the Senate. Mm -hmm. At isa lang do sa incumbent ang nanalo, nakalusot ng time mm -hmm. na So, it takes, it's really rare and it takes really an extraordinary event for the opposition to win. Mm -hmm. Dito sa atin naman, nung post-EDSA period, no, uh, 2007, nanalo ang genuine opposition ticket, mas marami silang napanalo compared to Team Unity. And ano yung nangyari previous to 2007? Hello, Hello Garcia. Garcia. So, uh, yan ang trend. So, so, barring any scandal or an earth-shaking event, yes. we expect the ruling coalition to win. Yes, uh, yes. Dun sa eight. Ano ang fearless forecast nyo? Kasi we have, as the surveys show, uh, what do the surveys tell us at this point? No? Uh, the early polls, yung Pulse Asia at saka social weather stations, may slight differences sila sa top 12. Is Again, it too early to... Well, yeah, maaga pa, nagsisimula pa lang tayo. And in fact, uh, kahit na election season na, no, uh, hindi pa nag, 
sisimula yung actual period of campaign for the national elections. So, nagsimula na tayo sa local, pero sa national hindi yeah. pa. Ngayon, ma, balik muna tayo bago natin talakayan yan. No? Balik muna tayo dun sa unang uh, dinidiscuss natin, which is actually, while the administration ticket has an advantage, yeah. no? hindi, hindi yan nakasulat sa bato. No? Bato. Uh, bato. O oh, yan, isang issue <laughs> Walang pa yan. political advertising dito. Walang political dito. <laughs> yan. No? Oh, at uh, uh, hindi yan uh, nasusulat sa, sa bato. No? Ang, ang ibig sabihin niyan, eh, maaari ding uh, masabing administration in name, pero sa totoo lang, hindi naman pala administration. Mamaya ibibigay ko yung mga uh, example nito. No? Um, ngayon, ang nakikita natin so far ang trend, no? uh, legacy candidates are dominating the Senate race. Ano yung legacy yes. candidate? Legacy candidate uh, is the term, I refer to legacy candidates as uh, celebrities or members of political clans or re-electionists who have successfully uh, transformed their names into national political brands. Mm. No? So, hindi lang yan mga dynasties or artista, okay. pero they have transformed their name, their image into national political brands na kahit mawala sila sa Senado, bumalik sila mm -hmm. sa Senado, ay malaki pa rin ang tsansa nilang manalo. So ito ba yung phenomenon dito sa Philippines na name recall? Of course, no? Is isa yan sa tinatawag nating name recall. No? Uh, of course, pag ikaw ay established na na brand, mm -hmm. no? uh, madaling maalala. No? So, uh, of course, kung ikaw ay bago, mahirap mag-establish mm -hmm. ng national brand unless you have the same war chest as, uh, as the Gachalians no, in the previous election. Uh, we have seen that uh, with enough resources from obscurity, you can go win the top post in the mm -hmm. Senate. No? Pero, so, hindi lang name recall. Mm -hmm. uh, there has to be uh, a huge war chest or maybe more strategic campaigning. Yeah, no? well, either you, have, you are extremely popular, mm -hmm. no? Uh, you're a celebrity, you're an actor, actress, you're a sports personality, mm. or uh, uh, you have the, the resource. And the third, of course, if you, have, if you articulate a particular issue that resonates with the public. No? Case in point, no? uh, 2007, again from obscurity, from prison, Antonio Trillanes winning yes. out of nowhere. Yes. No? So if if there is a very strong issue that the public feels so strongly about, then that's your ticket to the Senate. But as you've written, and also this has always been discussed, na yes. sabi nila ang Philippine elections na one personalities lang ang, of course. ang they matter. Yeah. But uh, do issues really matter? And if they do, and if they will in in May, anong what do you think are these issues that? resonate with the public. Yes. Uh, you know, ironically, uh, we, we keep on saying that uh, politics in the Philippines are personality-based. Yes. No? But from time to time, there are issues that really resonate mm -hmm. and that uh, can really make the difference in a national election. Especially, pag ang pinag-uusapan natin ay national. Mm -hmm. Doon sa lokal, talagang ano pa rin yan, very personalistic and patronage-based. No? Pero nag-iiba na ang anyo uh, because of yung tinatawag nating air war. No? So again, let's review. No, yung air war is yung media, no, uh, and then you have the ground war, which is really your your ground organization. So uh, the air war is really the pull factor, uh, the pull factor, and the ground war uh, refers to the push factor, di ba? Ngayon may bagong in between the air war and the ground war, may importanting connection, no, which is ano net war. No, which is social media. Yeah. No, ngayon, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na puro ground war ka lang no, or puro air war ka lang. No? So, kailangan mo, meron kang air war, meron kang ground war, at meron kang social media na nagko-connect. Yeah. Ngayon, hindi pa nangyayari sa Pilipinas na ang kandidatong pang national ay mananalo simply by social media. Yes. Let's disabuse the minds of uh -huh. our public na kaya mong manalo kung mag kung marami kang followers at marami kang likes sa Facebook, yeah. hindi pa tayo uh, nandun sa puntong yun. No? So, ang sadly, no, very traditional pa rin tayo. Either you have money for your air war, 
for your political ads na alam naman natin napakamahal or you have the organization grassroots na magtutulak at uh, mag uh, uh, magtutulak sa boto at magbabantay ng boto mo oh. no? so it's a mix of this you said the air war the ground war and, and the, the net, net war. war so depends yan sa analysis ng mga candidates yes. kung how much they yes. need to focus on yes. this specific yes. type of campaign yes mm. kaya nga kailangan din kung ikaw ay at uh, uh, tumatakbo sa national, no? lalo na sa Senado at sa pagkapangulo at uh, pangalawang pangulo, eh kailangan din ang strategy mo ay evidence-based. Mm -hmm. Hindi ito na ano lang, no? na pakiramdaman lang. No? Kasi tignan natin ngayon, no? yung mga na, 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 nangunguna sa survey, mataas ang kanilang uh, awareness. Mm -hmm. no? Tapos mataas din yung conversion nila, yung mga taong pag tinanong mo, boboto ka ba dito sa mga ito. Pag ikaw ay mala, mataas na yung awareness mo at, mat, at mataas din yung conversion na tinatawag, then most likely nandun ka sa taas. Usually, makikita natin yung mga nasa baba ng survey ay yung either ma, sobrang baba ng awareness nila or hindi ganun kataas or mababa yung kanilang conversion. So, the magic number really in terms of conversion if you average 40 you have a fighting chance mm. no so talagang kahit sabihin natin na uh, ilang bang kandidato ngayon no lampas 100 ba? plus oh, for 12 oh, seats oh, oh for 12 seats yes. di ba so uh, yung percentage ng yung probability na ikaw ay makapasok talagang malayo so ang disadvantage talaga dun sa sa hindi kilala at walang resources. So ano yung issues at this time na do you think will shape at least to a certain extent na no, yung campaign natin? Okay. Uh, if we again review the recent uh, surveys mm -hmm. ng Pulse Asia and SWS regarding issues of national concern, no, again, it's the economy. Mm -hmm. no? The economy will continue uh, to be the red button issue. Mm -hmm. no? uh, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, not all the candidates, no, either from the administration or the opposition, are talking about it. Some are hinting at it. Uh, some are making it, well, only one is making it the uh, center uh, uh, focus of his campaign. Uh, but then again, no, it's not simply about the economy. No? Uh, again, uh, let us try to put things in its proper context. No? Uh, it's no longer politics as usual in this country. Mm -hmm. no? As we have seen with the election of Rodrigo Duterte to the presidency, it is no longer politics as usual. And everybody, both the administration and the opposition uh, candidates, should, should realize na hindi na pwede yung dating gawe. Mm -hmm. Kasi, bakit ba nanalo si Presidente Duterte in 2016? It is because of yung tinatawag natin politics of anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. Bakit tayo nagkaroon ng ganon? Dahil, despite the economic growth, wala naman naramdaman yung common tao, yung middle class, dun sa so-called economic growth na yun. Uh, so, nahirapan sila. No? So, ang sa akin lang, no? to paraphrase uh, the famous campaign na uh, mantra of Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. it's if not simply the economy is stupid. No? Ang sa akin, it is also about social reforms. Ang palagi nakakalimutan sa national discourse ay paano ba natin babaguhin ang sistema para yung mga nauhuli, yung mga nagihirap ay makinabang din dito sa lahat ng so-called economic growth na ito. So far, wala pa tayong nakikitang nagsasabi ng ganun. Ano bang plano nyo dyan? Meron ngang iba na nasa left, at, pero yun naman ang kanilang advocacy from the, for the longest time. But among the mainstream politician and candidates, ano ang plano nyo sa pagbabago ng lipunan? I think ang nangyayari dito, we can see candidates na, na may specific issue right. na, na right. in-advocate. Right. Does that work? Like, one candidate will focus on the economy, as you said. Right. Another will focus on justice. Right. Another on China and right. sovereignty. Right. Right. Does that work in Philippine elections? Well, kasi nga, uh, 
in a field of so many mm. you need to uh, you know you need to stand yes. out no and if you if you tackle so many issues right. then uh, madali yeah. kang mawala sa sa radar ng right. madlang people di ba so kailangan mo pa rin ng, uh, yeah. ng at least core issue Correct. at dun sa core issue na yon dun mo ngayon ididikit yung iba pang issue ang tawag diyan narrative no Dapat so you have to tell your story. Tell your story, but you know, not anyone uh, can just tell a story. No, you mm -hmm. must tell a compelling story. <laughs> no? I mean, importante yung compelling. Oh, okay lang yan. <laughs> Kasi lahat may kwento, pero hindi naman lahat may kwenta, di ba? So kailangan compelling yung story mo. At uh, nakita naman natin, no, uh, sa kasaysayan ng ating election sa Senado, no? yung mga katulad ni Miriam Defensor Santiago, mm -hmm. na kahit na may partido o wala, mananalo at mananalo. Mm -hmm. Dahil aside from yung kanyang personality, eh very compelling yung mga issues at the way she delivered her message. Speaking of parties, political mm -hmm. parties, yes. no? uh, I think first time ito, mm -hmm. in contemporary or post-Marcos elections, right. na the president is not endorsing a political his political party nor an entire slate yes first but talaga it first time but talaga ito and what's happening <laughs> ibig bang sabihin the president doesn't care about parties <laughs> well well uh, this is typical of uh, politics in the age of duterte no? <laughs> i mean talagang i mean when he 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 was elected to the presidency you know people thought that the presidency would change duterte you no know? but what we're seeing is he's changing the presidency <laughs> and he's actually destroying the political system no uh, whether that's good or bad it depends uh, which side of the political fence you are no uh, but uh, unang una this is a function of uh, his long experience as a local chief executive of Dabao as mayor of Dabao hindi naman mahalaga ang party affiliation lalo na sa, da sa local no meron kang local party no mm -hmm. so that's how he operated all throughout his political career. Second, uh, nanalo siya sa pagkapangulo without real party support. Correct. I mean, uh, yes. the PDP Laban was just a skeletal party yes. when he was nominated. Kaya nga, he can safely say during the State of the Union address na I don't owe any one of you here anything. <laughs> no? But then there's the downside. No? Uh, again, uh, this only reinforces the... Uh, uh, non-institutionalization of our party system, which is very important because that is one of the major weakness of our democratic system, the lack of institutionalized political parties. And But then again, the president has always been tactical and strategic. Eh, alam naman yang naku, yung mga partidong ito, eh, puro pangalan lang naman to, palipat-lipat ang mga tao ng partido, eh, wag na lang. Oh, so diba? parang wala na siyang pretension wala about... Na sticking to a political party. Yes, oh. At saka, di ba apat lang ang ine-endorse niya on, pero more like two or three candidates oh. na gusto, gusto niyang manalo yun. Yes. Kasi, uh, kasi nung pre-martial law, no, kung ikaw, baka natatanda mo pa nung oh. pre-martial law. <laughs> College ako oh, Okay. <laughs> Wala, prep pa lang ako nun, eh, hindi ko na maalala. So, uh, nung, nung, nung pre-martial lot, ang ine-elect every two years, kasi uh, four years lang ang term ng uh, presidente, no? every two years, ay walo. Walo ng walo. Kaya ang slate nun ay walo. Di ba? So, I don't know kung nakasanayan na ng tao, yung tinatawag natin pat dependency no? sa political science, na yan na ang nakasanayan ng tao. Kaya, pagdating ngayon sa sa post-EDSA mm -hmm. uh, senatorial elections, lahat ng survey na kinuha, ang fill-out rate sa pagboto ng tao ay walo. Mm. Di ba? So, on the average, walo lang oh. ang pinifill up ng tao. Ngayon, nakikita natin sa administration, first time na walang real administration slate. Yes. First time in the post-EDSA elections na ano lang, no? Uh, uh, walang Duterte slate, mm -hmm. may Duterte candidates. Correct. And ang ganda nga ng latag, no? it's between 8 to 14. <laughs> diba? Yun nga. Kasi may tatlo Oo. ka, no? meron kang slate ng PDP, may slate ka ng ugpong, ugpong. ng pagbabago, 
at may slip ka ng ni na personal ng presidente. Unlike before, no, uh, nasanay tayo yung first midterm election under uh, the post-EDSA regime, no, under the Ramos administration. We had that very powerful combination of lakas and laban mm -hmm. noong 1995. Noong 2001, after the uh, EDSA DOS uh, event, nagkaroon ng People Power Coalition, di ba? Versus Persa ng Masang Pilipino, no? yung naalala nyo. Mm -hmm. Then after that, 2007, you have uh, Team Unity versus uh, mm -hmm. uh, Genuine Opposition. Tapos nung panahon ni Noy Noy, Team Pinoy, no? Okay. Di ba? Yes, Team Pinoy yes. versus Una. Oh. No? So, lahat ng administration during the midterms, meron siyang slate na may pangalan. Oh. Hindi ngayon nat, wala. Ngayon wala. Ang meron lang slate na may pangalan ang op opposition, yung ocho diretso. Ocho diretso. Pero hindi pa natin alam anong magiging diskarte ng administration. Magsasama-sama ba ang PDP ugpong at susundin mm. nila yung slate ng Pangulo o may separate slate sila. Ang sabi ni Mayor uh, uh, Sara, uh, in the Sara sa Davao, ah, dalawa ang slate. Ito, very yeah. unique, no? Dalawa ang slate, no? Pag napang-fuse ako dyan, dalawa ang in-endorse nilang slate. Yes, uh, may dalawa siyang slate. Uh, she has uh, ugpong slate national yeah. na 12 and, yes. at may ugpong, ugpong slate na local yes. na hanggang 14, oh. no? Uh, medyo, it's a creative way of accommodating Pero uh, there are supporters. only 12 seats. So, anong strategy? Anong thinking behind eh, dito? Alam mo naman, I think it's so very Filipino <laughs> na mapagbigyan. Sige na, sama ka na sa amin. Eh, kaso, an unintended consequence yan, baka nga iboto ng mga tao, 14, ma, 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 ma disqualify oh. pa yung balota. Di ba? Mm. Di ba? Manal oh, and void very, pa. Di ba? First time yata itong mangyari na there are more candidates mm -mm. endorsed by one party right right then the number of seats available right mm. oh, so ibang iba <laughs> so it akala ko maybe one of the thinking of the reasons behind this guy is to overwhelm the opposition parang to crowd them out mm, i don't think so uh, uh, so lang it's really yan. accommodation accommodation yan, uh -huh. eh. oh, and yes. si president naman uh, on his part, kasi, kasi wala na ngang pretensions about political parties, he's yes. talking about three or four candidates. Right, right. So, ibig sabihin, pag hindi manalo yung kanyang three or four, uh, three candidates, what will that mean for him? Well, also, may practicality din naman yan sa diskarte ng presidente. Dahil mm -hmm. among the real, genuine, pro-Duterte administration mm -hmm. candidates, ang talaga may chance lang manalo ay dalawa o tatlo. Mm -hmm. no? Kung titignan okay. natin yung survey. In survey, okay. Oo, oo. So, sino ito? Si, uh, of course, si, si Bongo, si, si uh, Bato, Bato, at si uh, Francis, Francis Tolentino. Tolentino. Those are his three candidates actually. So far. Yes. Yun yung core candidates niya. Yes. Kasi okay. sigurado naman na may, may laban itong mga ito. Mm -hmm. di ba? So, mm -hmm. in the rest, sige, susuportahan natin, pero hindi natin sigurado na mananalo. So, and then, the rest, sa so opposition naman, isa o dalawa lang talaga ang sigurado mm, yeah. na mananalo. Mm -hmm. no? uh, so far, ang pumapasok pa lang si Mar Rojas at si Bam Aquino. So, dun sa purely opposition at purely uh, administration, 3-2 lang. The rest are re-electionists na, again, uh, legacy candidates, national brands, na with, whether they, they, yes. they are with the opposition or with the administration, Correct. they will win. Yes. Uh -huh. no? Anong magiging epekto nito? Na again, go, looking back at the lessons of history, nakita naman natin na marami dyan na sumasanib sa administration party mm -hmm. in exchange for support. No? Uh, either they're riding on the popularity of the incumbent or mm -hmm. uh, they, are, they are also uh, uh, asking for resources. Ngayon, ang problema, after the election, nakita naman natin, di ba? Yung Team Pinoy, di ba? 2000, 2013, no? Team Pinoy. May mga tumakbo under Team Pinoy na naging pinakamainit na katunggali ng Aquino administration oh. noong 2016. Unang-una na dyan si Alan Peter Cayetano, even si Grace Poe. 
So, hindi ito si, uh, kumbaga, uh, hindi, hindi nakakasiguro na porket tumakbo ka, may mga tao, ano, may mga kandidatong tumakbo under the administration ticket, that they will support you all yes. the way. Kasi ang next, ang magiging logic niyan, yung electoral calculus ng susunod na halalan. Kung sino ang mas matunog o sino ang may ambisyon maging presidente, lalo na sa 2022. So kung after the midterm elections, ang expectation nyo ba is that it will be just like any other old, any other Senate, as you said, yung candidates, kahit na tumakbo with the ruling coalition, pwedeng maging uh, uh, opposition. Opposition or, or independent. independent. Uh, so, wala talaga tayong independent candidates. Kasi may mga tumatakbo, like Serge Osmeña, independent. Uh, wala siyang political party. Ayan nga isa nating uh, kailangan na uh, pag-aralan at uh, obserbahan, no? Yung mga established brand names like Serge Osmeña mm -hmm. and even uh, Juan Ponce Enrile, mm -hmm. no? na sa tingin nila, kaya nilang manalo kasi pumapasok pa rin sila mm -hmm. sa, within the margin no? ng winning yes. circle. No? So, what does this tell us about our party system? We do not have a party system. Mm -hmm. And again, from the perspective of political science, this is a function of our multi-member uh, Senate set up that are elected as a national constituency. Ang, in, ang nangyayari, dahil nga uh, dosi kayo, tapos uh, ang, ang, ang bilangan dito, kung sino ang pinakamaraming boto, mananalo, there is no incentive for you to run as a party. no? Kanya-kanya talaga. From the very beginning, our Senate senatorial race has been configured so, so that individual politicians will look out for their own. Kaya nga, miski nung, nung sa simula't simula pa lang, even, nabanggit mo si Serge Osmeña, mm -hmm. Serge Osmeña has never really joined a ticket. Mm -hmm. Pag nangampanya si Serge Osmeña, minsan mag-isa lang niya sa okay. helicopter niya, iikot sa buong basa. Pag meron siyang kakampi, isasama niya. Mm -hmm. Pero as a, as a ticket or as a member of a, a party, I don't think uh, Serge has been a, uh, a party man. No? So, lahat naman sila nominal. No? Nominal. Mm -hmm. So more of the same, wala naman talagang, do you see any dramatic change dito sa elections natin because of the rise of Hugpong, ng pagbabago, the rise of Sara Duterte as a power broker. Okay. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Well, actually, si Mayor Sara Duterte uh, is on the right track no? when it comes to textbook party building. No? Kasi ang pagbubuo ng partido dapat mula sa baba, pataas. At yan ang ginagawa niya. No? So, hindi niya ni-register ang Ugpong as a national party but as a regional party. Tapos nakikipag-alyansa siya sa mga iba't ibang provincial at regional party with the end goal hopefully na to uh, coalesce, to unite all of this into a national coalition. No? This is similar to Malaysian style politics, no? Uh, sa Malaysia lang nga, it's uh, the divide is ethnic, mm -hmm. no? Uh, et ethnocultural, no? So either you are uh, Malay, Indian or, or Chinese, Chinese, no? Tat kaya nagbuo, yeah. nagkaroon ng umno, di ba? Uh, yung ruling party dati ng Malaysia. Dito sa atin, ang nang nakikita ko sa diskarte ni Mayor Sara, nagbubuo rin siya no from the ground up which is admirable kaso ang tanong dito yung binubuo niya ay hindi grassroots parties but parties of political clans and dynasties mm -hmm. ng iba't ibang probinsya no so ang mangyayari diyan magkakaroon ka nga ng national party pero it's still the same uh, clans political clans and political dynasties and then second naka-angkla ito sa viability ng Duterte brand Correct. in 2022. So, uh, kung popular pa rin ang Pangulo uh, until the eve of the 2022 election, then everybody will join Ugpong for sure. No? But if, you know, you know politicians being politicians, no? uh, uh, you know, they are self-interested utility maximizers. No? <laughs> self-interested utility maximizers. Uh, oh, diba? That's the technical <laughs> term for 
saying something that I cannot say on air, no? But uh, you can whisper to me oh, later. later. Yeah. So there's self-interested utility maximizer. So syempre, uh, titignan nila, no? Uh, nakita naman natin ang nangyari sa PDP laban, di ba? From a party of three or four, naging super majority, uh, di ba? More than 200, 300 plus members, and then now, they're no longer uh, considered a major player. So, yeah. I think the other thing, dito sa hugpong ng pagbabago, maybe last question na lang, mm -hmm. it represents an alliance of the Marcoses, yes. the Pagal Arroyos, yes. the Dutertes, no? Yeah. Formidable ba ito? Yes. And Kasi, what does it mean for our politics or elections? Okay. Kasi ang dominant narrative after EDSA ay yung yellow narrative, mm -hmm. the Aquino narrative. No? And I'm not saying this in the social media sense na dilawan. No? Mm -hmm. But really, uh, the regime that was established after the Marcos regime was the Aquino regime, which means uh, it became the dominant narrative that po the political uh, life of this nation focused around the... the the narrative of the Aquinos. It's either you are for the EDSA ideology or you're against the EDSA ideology. So no, nakita natin si, si Fidel Ramos was a supporter of that, of that narrative. Si Erap was a critic of that narrative. Uh, si Gloria originally was a part of that narrative but became an apostate, no? <laughs> diba? Because of uh, Hello Garci. And then, of course, Noy Noy tried to rescue that narrative. But because the narrative failed to deliver uh, real reforms as promised, no? uh, ano yung mga real reforms, di ba? Uh, sabi nila, ipapasa nila yung uh, uh, FOI bill, uh, uh, magpapasa sila ng Party Development Act, magpapasa sila ng anti-dynasty. In the end, they also played the same traditional political game and forgot their narrative of change and reform. So, uh, you know, na-frustrate ang tao, so they look for a uh, uh, different kind of change. And nakita nila si uh, Digong sa Davao and they elected him to power. So now, we are seeing a counter-narrative, a counter-EDSA narrative. And I think this will become... Uh, the dominant uh, two narratives that will contest, that will become a part of the uh, Philippine politics for the next few years. No? So you have this coalition of uh, the EDSA defenders, EDSA reformers, and a coalition of those who were marginalized by the EDSA narrative. No? So polarized tayo in that way in and, the way you describe and it. in a way we are simply following the trend in other parts mm. of the world just like in the united states so uh unti unti tayong napopolarize parang sa america parang sa europa mm. at at tignan natin kung may may uusbong o may aangat na mga uh, kilusan o mga leader na ang mensahe nila ay hindi paghiwalay ng bansa kundi pag-isahin ang bansa. On that positive note, Professor Tihangki, and it, I think it's worth remembering. Yun ang hanapin natin siguro sa campaign na ito, yes. yung message na instead of that polarizes the country, it's yes. to bring us together. Yes. Hahanapin natin yan na during the campaign. Of course. Thank you very yeah. much. Maraming salamat. And thank you very thank much you. to our uh, listeners and viewers. And we will keep talking about elections in the next few months until uh, May 2019. Thank you. Thank you.